Hello, this is Brian. Today is Wednesday, April 9th, 2025. I'm here at Torrey Pines Extension Area. It is time for a Spotlight on Plants episode. Long awaited Spotlight video. First Spotlight I've done, I believe, this whole entire year. So that colorful flower you saw was our specimen for the day. Our topic is C. Dahlia, and this is Leptocine maritima, formerly and still occasionally known as Coreopsis maritima. So what we have here is a slightly succulent herbaceous perennial plant in the sunflower family, the Asteraceae. As you can tell, the flower, they look like uh, sunflowers. They're related to sunflowers. So, this is a rare local endemic species of plant, called, often referred to as the tick seeds in the genus Leptocine, formerly being in the genus Coreopsis. So, Leptocine gigantea. It's one species we have out here, Liptocine bigalovi. We have several species of Liptocine out here. But today, we're focusing on this rare one here. So this is called the Sea Dolly, and it's only native to this general area, to my knowledge, along the southern half of the, central to southern half of the San Diego County coastline, mostly in these sandstone soils usually in the understory of Torrey Pine Woodland. And this is our park namesake here, Pinus Torriana, subspecies Torriana, the Torrey Pine. And so, this has been a long-awaited episode of Spotlight because I've been wanting to talk about this plant for a long time and it's been years since I've been up to one. So let's go talk about some of the details of this plant because there are several specimens in this area So, what are the features of this plant? Well, I told you it was a per, uh, perennial, slightly succulent, herbaceous plant. So, it's kind of fleshy. So, what we have are these very, very widely lobed, uh, well, these really lobed leaves that are really thin, and they're kind of fleshy. They're thin in profile. Looks like they are or even tripinately compound or tripinately lobed. So you can see here they're very th thready and they're roughly triangular in profile. And again, they are fleshy. Very handsome plant. Pre locally common in these coastal, these coastal canyons. And I'm, I'm talking about like right next to the water. We're scarcely a mile away from the water. So this is, it doesn't go much further in than this. So yeah. Lobed leaves, green fleshy stalks with some uh, reddish brownish colors towards the flower heads. And this is a sunflower family plant as I'd mentioned. So this is a flower head. This is a radiate flower head. And what I mean by radiate flower head, a flower head is a composite of florets, in other words, miniature flowers. So the sunflower family has discoid florets, ray florets, a combination. This one has a combination of disc florets, these little tiny miniature florets in the middle. It's probably about a, probably about 50 to 100 little florets in there. And then these which are the ray florets. So these are all like flower, miniature flowers, all in one flower head. So that's where the name composite comes from, and also a former name for the sunflower family, the compositae, deals with the composite flower heads. So here's a closer look at the foliage, so you can see. Looks like this is last year's uh, flower uh, inflorescence. And you can see the th really thready compound 
compoundly lobed leaves. Very fleshy. So I'm going to go ahead and snap a picture or two of this, and we'll talk a little bit more about its, its, habit, its habits and its life cycles. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about the life cycle of this plant. Now I mentioned it's a perennial, so it lives for multiple years. I don't know exactly how long this plant can live, but it could at least live for a few to several years. Hence the name perennial, living through the years. In Latin, perennial, through the years. However, somebody who is not completely aware of that fact might think that this plant's an annual because after it flowers and sets seed in the summertime, it appears to die. But it's not dying. It's going through its dormancy period. See, this plant is up now because we've had some rains in the last uh, month and a half. So this plant is alive, full of energy, and it just had enough rain for it to start uh, blooming pretty nicely over here. Now, like I said, it looks like it, it dies towards the middle of summer after it sets seed. And when it does that, all it's doing is a, entering what's called above ground dormancy. Above ground dormancy is when the top half of the plant dies off or goes to sleep. Or the top half of the plant senesces. It, after it sets seed, it ages and dries up. That's what senescing is. However, the bottom part of the plant, the under, under soil portions, the roots, stay alive. And that's how they survive the dry season because it is a relatively delicate plant. The above ground tissues are relatively delicate and need to have enough moisture to survive. And with only about 10 inches of rain falling a year, mostly between late November and early April, that's only about four and a half months of, for them to be able to sprout up from the roots produce more leaves, inflorescences, and seeds, and then dry up later on and go back to its dormancy. So it only has a few months of that kind of time. So it's what we call an ephemeral perennial. That's another term that botanists use for plants that go through cycles of above ground awakeness and above ground dormancy, and where the root persists for multiple years. So ephemeral comes from the term for seasons, I believe from Greek. Ephemeral re refers to seasonality of the plant. So let's go take a couple more pictures of this plant and then start wrapping up the final thoughts on Leptocyne maritima. So, a few final thoughts uh, on this plant. After it flowers, it sets these little tiny, little tiny brownish seeds along the inflorescence, along where the inflorescence is, kind of brown, brown kind of sticking up a little bit, kind of bristly, after these go uh, get fertilized and turn to seed. Hopefully providing material for future generations. So, wonderful plant, basically only found on these coastal bluffs, coastal, very much coastal canyons, from sea level to maybe about four or five hundred feet above sea level, maybe, probably not much more than that, and loves these, especially the, the shadier canyons underneath the overstory of Tory pine and sometimes oaks, scrub oaks and chaparral oaks and chaparral shrubs. And especially in moister canyons where moisture stays longer and it takes a lot longer to dry out from the dry season. So that's it. Leptocyne, Leptocyne maritima, the beautiful, venerable 
C. Dahlia. Rare local native plant here near Del Mar in San Diego County. That's going to do it for this episode of Spotlight. I hope you enjoyed uh, coming along with me, uh, talking about yet another awesome species of plant that grows here in SoCal. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of Spotlight.